Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, this will be a very brief press conference. I want to thank you all for being here today. I'm joined by Rochester Police uh, Chief David Smith and Corporation Counsel Linda Kingsley. I uh, am here today to let the community know that the city of Rochester, along with my colleagues in cities like Buffalo, Cleveland, and Columbus, are filing suit against Kia and Hyundai for the impact that these thefts are having on Rochester. As we know, these thefts have skyrocketed. And as many of you know, Kia and Hyundai vehicles made before 2021 do not include some of the most basic anti-theft technology called immobilizers. These manufacturers knowingly made, distributed, and marketed these cars with serious security flaws, and they have failed to move quickly to solve the problem for thousands of car owners. I am especially frustrated because these cars are affordable and they are popular among people who can least afford to lose time from work because their means of transportation has disappeared for a dangerous joyride. I will tell you that I have had individuals call me 2 o'clock in the morning telling them that their cars are no longer in their driveways or parking lot, that they have not been able to go to work, that they have missed work, that sometimes one of the saddest cases I heard was a person's had their children's basketball shorts in the back of the car, in their sneakers, so they had to go out and get new stuff for a game that they were playing. I want Chief Smith to give you a sense of scope of this problem and I'm going to ask him to share some of the statistics that we are dealing with. Chief. Thank you, Mayor. So I'll give you some numbers from this year and try and give you some perspective compared to other years. So far, this year to date, stolen vehicles in the city of Rochester, 403 Kias have been stolen, 386 Hyundais have been stolen. All other makes combined is only 274. So that is a total of 1,063 stolen vehicles this year so far in the city of Rochester. By comparison, at this time in 2022, we only had 387 stolen vehicles. So again, 1,063 compared to 387. Last year of those 387, 18 of those were Kias, 14 of those were Hyundais. Smash and grab burglaries that we've seen on the rise, many of which using vehicles to commit the crime. So there's been 20 smash and grabs using vehicles. 19 of these 20 utilized stolen Kia or Hyundai vehicles. As a result of those, one juvenile suspect has been charged with eight different incidents countywide, including five in the city of Rochester. We've had multiple incidents in which these vehicles have been used in and around schools, as we saw the Franklin High School incident last week with the vehicle driving recklessly and endangering the students. We get multiple calls for reckless driving involving these vehicles. Uh, only last week, my aide and myself were out and around and had an encounter with one of these stolen vehicles ourselves in the Genesee section that was driving recklessly. It's happening all too frequently. Enforcement-wise, we've made about 60 arrests in the city of Rochester this year alone. About half of those arrests have been juveniles driving these stolen cars. Countywide so far this year, 65 juveniles have been charged with stolen cars. Out of these 65, 15 have subsequently been rearrested for the same charges. Out of those 65, only six are still in custody at the Children's Detention Center. And I'll hand it back over to the mayor. Thank you. So the 23 and a half times increase year over year in Kia and Hyundai thefts in the first three months of car larcenies, that is, um, a challenge. And I want to make you make sure you heard him very clearly. 
752 Kias and Hyundai's cars were stolen in the first three months of this year, compared with 32 during this time last year. This problem is out of control, and these costs should not be borne by the city, our residents, or our businesses. So when I am, because we are participating in this lawsuit, I do this on behalf of all of the residents in the city of Rochester and individuals who bought their Kias and Hyundais, who probably thought that they would have the 21st century anti-theft technology, and these cars do not. And as the chief said, once these cars are stolen and are being used in smash and grab burglaries, the vehicle sustained, sustained significant damage, and cities and businesses have shouldered the costs, the building damages, the stolen goods, the destruction of, of equipment. Rochester requires restitution to compensate for the, for the manufacturers that chose to cut corners and leave these vehicle, vehicles susceptible to theft. I'd like to ask our Corporation Counsel, Linda Kingsley, to come to the podium and give us the details on the lawsuit. Linda. Thank you, Mayor. On Friday of last week, I entered into an agreement with the law firm of Keller Rohrbach, based in Seattle, Washington, to serve as outside counsel for the purposes of commencing litigation against Kia and Hyundai. In recent years, in the case of opioids, and in recent months, in the case of guns, we have commenced lawsuits against various corporate entities addressing the damage caused by opioids and guns. Similarly, this community has been harmed by the actions and inactions of Kia and Hyundai. We are bringing this lawsuit on behalf of the City of Rochester to address the impact of this situation on city resources. The lawsuit, which will likely be filed this week, will be part of a series of lawsuits filed by municipalities from around the country. The suit will be a federal action and will be heard in the U.S. District Court of the Central District of California as part of a multi-district litigation. By commencing this suit, Rochester will be part of the initial group of municipalities doing so, including Buffalo, Seattle, Cincinnati, Cleveland, Columbus, Milwaukee, Madison, and St. Louis. We expect many more municipalities to follow. Rochester is filing suit to force Hyundai and Kia to do what's right, fix the cars, and address the effects of the crime wave that their failure to install appropriate technology has caused. As the mayor mentioned, other car manufacturers have been installing engine immobilizers for decades. 96% of 2015 model cars for all other manufacturers had engine immobilizers, while only 26% of the 2015 models of Kia and Hyundai did. They have been installing immobilizers in their higher end vehicles for over a decade, but it appears they chose profits over safety when it came to the models driven by those that could not afford the higher end models. Our complaint seeks monetary and injunctive relief to stop the nuisance and mandate that Kia and Hyundai fix the problem they created. Some of the monetary relief we are seeking is for costs related to law enforcement time and effort, the cost of emergency services, and other harms to our community. These thefts and the pursuits that often follow, along with the epidemic of smash and grab burglaries utilizing these stolen vehicles, deprive the public of safe streets and sidewalks, as well as divert a massive amount of law enforcement and emergency resources. We look forward to vigorously pursuing relief through the courts. Thank you. As I've said before, we will use every tool in our toolbox to address the threats to the city. These car thefts are as much a threat to our community as opioids or illegal weapons. We have to work. We have worked to hold opioid and gun manufacturers responsible and the impact of their decision. And now we will do the same with Kia and Hyundai. With that, I will take uh, any questions that I may be able to answer at this time. Questions? Is, it, is there a dollar amount uh, uh, for the damage that has been caused? No, we will certainly be documenting, particularly the staffing hours <coughs> excuse me, that this has taken, but we are not asking for a specific dollar amount. And while you're at the podium, uh, is this a class action lawsuit <coughs> or a multi-district? 
It's, it's not a class action lawsuit. There are separate lawsuits filed by each municipality. However, the federal courts are combining the operation of them in one court, likely in front of one judge for convenience purposes. So in this complaint, Rochester would be the only Yes, this will be City of Rochester versus. Well, I mean, I think what it means is that um, I want them to know that I, I've, I've heard them, I've seen them, I understand that this has caused great hardship for them, and many of them don't have the ability to bring lawsuits uh, because they spent time buying their cars. Um, so we do this on behalf of the citizens of Rochester. We do this on behalf of the senior citizen that has her car taken from in front of her house, even though she locked all the doors and did all the things that we told her to do. We do this on behalf of the mother who was not able to get to work on time or to the daycare center to pick her child up. We do this on behalf of the mother whose kids' basketball or soccer cleats were left in the back of their car and the car was stolen and trashed. So we hope that this sends a message that the mayor and the city of Rochester stands with these owners that did the right thing, that pay their car notes on a regular basis, and all they really wanted was to make sure that their cars had the basic, the most basic immobilization techniques that they should have, because this is 2021, not 1918. Just, just to clarify, we do not have the ability as a municipality to bring suit to recover the specific damages that an individual might have had we are seeking that, that Kia and Hyundai correct the problem, and we are seeking reimbursement for things that will otherwise be taxpayer expense, the large public safety expense we've had. I suspect there may well be a class action lawsuit brought by consumers at some point, but just to be clear, that's not something that we can seek to recover. I, I think we'll have to be discussing that, but like what we are asking for, at least in part, is reimbursement of the wages and the expenses we had to incur for police resources. TikTok did not help, but our contention in this litigation is that the problem starts and ends with Kia and Hyundai. Had they properly manufactured these vehicles and then had they corrected the problem when they saw it, there wouldn't be anything to be on TikTok. There are plenty of other things on TikTok that folks can get themselves in trouble with, but our focus is the blame lies with the manufacturer. Any, any last que any last minute questions? Um, um, yes. Um, Jackie. Jackie. Oh. Jackie. Yes, I had, I had a brain freeze. Jackie. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's right. Well, remember, this is not just the Rochester problem. These been, this, is, this is widespread. So if you look at the number of uh, so smash and grabs, so, so there were 73 smash and grabs in Monroe County since the start of the year. 36 were in Rochester. The rest were um, all throughout the county. So this is not just a Rochester problem. Um, if you talk to the state police, there's also problems in Shiler County. So I want to be clear that this is a major, major, this is an issue across our state, across our county. So. Um, this is, this is why we have to deal with this collectively, and this is why you also see my colleagues, all the, all the cities that were mentioned, I know them well. They're mayors in all cities that I talk to regularly. Um, so this is, a, this is a collective problem that we have, not just the Rochester problem. Um, and, and that's why we need to get relief. And then there's obviously the enforcement things that we will continue to do in Rochester, that we will continue to do our part to deter this type of bad behavior, because we think that uh, businesses should not have to endure this. Um, residents should not have to endure this, and we're going to use every tool that we can to try to stop this, to try to correct this. And again, this is just one of many tools that we are um, that we are going to deploy. You mean the chief getting in the foot chase? Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear about this. Did you pursue? No. 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 I can't uh, have my chief running out. There. <laughs>
Uh, we were behind a vehicle that we identified as stolen, and uh, the youths who were in it uh, abandoned it and fled in front of us. And at my age, I'm uh, in no shape to catch a juvenile. Um, and that was the sum total of it. Do you know if they were taken into custody? No, we did not apprehend them. We recovered the car for that vehicle owner, um, which was nice that someone gets their car back, but we weren't able to catch anyone. Where, where was this? Uh, well, I mean, staffing is a problem, um, as we've said over and over again, but we are keeping it ourselves at full staff by filling the slots with, with overtime. So the, the work is getting done, but again, it, it comes at a cost. Last, last two, go ahead. Sure. So based on the incident at Franklin High School, we asked our state police partners if they would assist us at dismissal times. Uh, they agreed to. Um, one of the resources they opted to bring to bear was the state police helicopter. Uh, we're very grateful for their help. Uh, we had some good responses to it. Um, and uh, Franklin has been quiet. We anticipate uh, this week as well we will have a larger presence outside Franklin at dismissals. Well, ultimately, punishment is after offenses are adjudicated. But when you're talking with someone who's been charged with eight offenses and hasn't even gone to court yet, um, and then is potentially released, then yeah, that, that, that's an issue. Thank you, everyone. And um, obviously, we will keep you um, posted um, as this, um, as this go fo goes forward. And again, I thank you all for taking your Monday morning.